Patch 10.0.7 is underway, and today we're going to be giving you an up... Wait, where did you guys all come from? <clears throat> Sorry. Anyway, our pro consultants have spent all week vigorously navigating the pink sea of solo shuffle, and now feel comfortable sharing their findings. Are Rhett still going to be on top after the nerfs? How are demonology warlocks after the tyrant hotfix? And what two healers have taken the S tier throne? We've got all this to share and so much more as we bring you guys the updated tier list for patch 10.0.7. But first, if you truly want to improve fast and get the rating you've always wanted, then head to skillcap.com. It's completely risk-free to try us out, as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using Skillcapped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Come check us out with the link in the description below and get the rating you've always wanted. The most noticeable change after the patch was of course the rework to Rhett Paladin. Now we'll be the first to admit that our initial A tier expected placement of Rhett was a little off. Or, well, quite a bit off actually, as Retribution, like you all well know, has been completely dominating the PvP scene since the reset, and this might just be the most overtuned we've ever seen a spec in the history of WoW. But recent hotfixes set to tone them down by targeting burst survivability are here to save us. With the incredibly overpowered holy power spender of Justicar's Vengeance being targeted, having its damage reduced by 10% on stunned targets as well as its inbuilt healing drastically reduced. Alongside further nerfs to both Vanguard of Justice, which was a new talent flat out increasing the damage of Justicar's Vengeance by a whopping 20%, which will now be 25% less effective in PvP, as well as the talent Fading Light being gutted, having its effectiveness reduced by 75% as well as the damage of Blessing of Dawn's Holy Power spender increase being reduced by 25%. Then we've also a very big change or well bug fix to make sure Avenging Wrath now has the 75% PvP modifier it was apparently missing. While these changes may seem drastic at first, Retribution will surprisingly still remain to be very strong, as one very overlooked change was the addition of Unbound Freedom to now be a talent which in turn has further opened up room to pick up the likes of Blessing of Sanctuary, Blessing of Spell Warding, and Judgments of the Pure. In fact, we're very surprised there was no nerfs targeted towards Judgments of the Pure, as when combined with Divine Toll and Improved Judgment, results in Judgment almost always being off cooldown, making it impossible for certain classes that rely on magic crowd control to ever make it stick. And although damage is slightly down with these hotfixes, survivability is still massively up as a whole this patch, with Rhett still remaining very durable thanks to the addition of baseline divine protection and talents like sanctified plates. On top of what still feels like a massive buff to healing with substantial increases to word of glory healing, as well as the light celerity talent making flash of light instant. I don't think anybody in their right mind would be able to argue about Rhett's needing nerfs or not, but for now, from what we see, despite their short midweek venture into a tier of their own, Retribution will be moving into our S tier. Subtlety is one spec that saw some pretty hefty nerfs this patch, primarily aimed at their burst damage. Inherently, sub is a very difficult spec to place on tier lists, because a large amount of the strength of this spec relies on the player piloting it. From what we can tell though, sub is without a doubt slightly worse than previously, with them losing around 40k damage on each burst window. But despite losing damage, subtlety never really falls off too hard, as you nerf one spec and they seem to have 15 other viable builds in their back pocket. And now we're seeing rogue players favor builds more focused around sustained damage and control with talents like the Rotten and Invigorating Shadow Dust to surprisingly good results. Despite this adaptation though, the relative strength of Arms Warriors and Rep Paladins in the current meta has us moving sub down into the B plus tier. Joining sub in the B plus tier are Asa Rogues and Demon Hunters, who seem to be edging towards the bottom of the pack with performance and representation going drastically down since the patch. Again, the Rep Paladin Arms Warrior domination is causing each of these specs to underperform in the current meta due to how well Retin Arms does into them. In the A tier, Survival Hunters, Windwalker Monks, and Feral Druids are all marginally ahead of the B plus tier and are performing at around the same level of strength since the patch. Arms Warriors retain the top spot of our S tier. The reason for this is that Arms Warriors are just the all around package, providing everything you need to perform well in solo shuffle and then some. And of course, joining arms in the S tier are Retribution Paladins who are now back from a quick stint in our S++++ tier. One spec that's also been out of hand just far less on the radar is Beast Mastery Hunter, who in the same hotfixes get targeted with a 10% nerf on kill command, basically offsetting the buff with patch 10.0.7. The problem is that these changes also came with overall buffs for all Hunter specs, with buffs to Death Chakram increasing its damage by 100%. Also, not expected was just how big the Rejuvenating Winds change was for Beastmastery Hunters. 
as they're now able to further benefit from the health when using Tank Pet for Fortitude of the Bear, which when paired alongside Kindred Beasts, gives them a very strong defensive cooldown every minute. So not only did an S tier spec still gain damage buffs with the patch, but they also became harder to kill. All in all, as expected, Beast Mastery remains in a ridiculously powerful spot and will keep its position as one of the best ranged specs for solo shuffle. Some specs are allowed to be overpowered for extended periods, but not Warlocks, as Demonology was the first spec to receive some tuning this patch, suffering a 50% nerf to Tyrant just days after the patch went live. Luckily for Demonology players, these fixes are not the end of the world, and in fact you could say they got away lightly as the overall 10.0.7 additions to the Warlock tree and buffs to both pet damage and immutable hatred have still catapulted the spec's strength in solo shuffle when compared to last patch despite these fixes. If you're looking for a new caster to play for this patch, then Demonology is a really good option, remaining in the S tier for this update. One spec that we moved down with the patch was Frost Mage, who despite big buffs to Frostbolt as we predicted still feel considerably weaker. Why this might seem odd is that due to the playstyle of Frost Mage, it's very rare that you actually cast, and you tend to favor instant damage from Ice Lance, Orb, and Blizzard. Then with the only damaging spell you do want to consistently cast in Glacial Spike, getting its damage massively toned down. Leaves Frost Mage is feeling a lot weaker this patch, but despite that, Frost is still undeniably the strongest spec for Solo Shuffle. So for now, we're happy with their placement of A plus tier. Overall, the ranged tier list remains exactly the same from our early week predictions. Demonology and Beast Mastery Hunters continue to dominate the S tier, looking at our A plus tier. Destruction, after moving down last week after the Mayhem change, has still been very strong, but the shift in playstyle to a more casted damage build has definitely provided some much needed counterplay to their still very high damage. Marksmanship Hunter is another spec that got targeted in the recent hotfixes with a 4% decrease in damage across the board. This will obviously reduce damage slightly, but shouldn't be enough of a nerf to bring them down a tier. For our A tier, Affliction Warlocks after the changes have seen a slight increase in power, and we're happy for now with their A tier placement. Balanced Druids are feeling slightly weaker this patch despite getting some decent new talent options. The reason for this though being the very clear shift in the meta, making utilizing Root Beam even more challenging. Our healer tier list is where we see the most shakeup after the patch. We predicted Restoration Shamans to become a lot better with the patch, but not this good. Healing has been tremendously improved with the slight buffs to all healing spells, which was honestly Restoration Shamans only real weakness previously. But now having that healing combined with strong cooldowns like Double Earth and Wall Totem, Spirit Link, and Ascendance makes it increasingly hard to find openings. Earth and Wall is very crucial right now, as it just so happens to be increasingly strong against pet classes, of which happen to be at the forefront of the ranged meta right now. But just overall, more healing for shamans means they can now spend less time healing and more time playing to their strengths, which is all the added disruption they bring to the table. We'll be bumping Restoration Shaman up from A plus tier to S tier. Another healer that's become a whole lot stronger this patch is Mistweaver Monk, more in specific Fistweavers. Mistweaver in general excels in more melee heavy metas, which is what 10.0.7 is shaping up to be as of now. The healing style that Fistweaving offers is very hard to deal with unless you bring an abundance of crowd control to take advantage of the Mistpositioned Monk. And with crowd control classes falling more and more out of the meta, Fistweavers rise in popularity. We did, however, see some buffs to the standard healing version of Mistweaver, which have made not Fistweaving much more of a viable alternative, but Fistweaving still remains to be the best option. Mistweaver will climb from A plus tier to S tier in this update. We previously had Disciplined Priest inside of our S tier, even after their recent nerfs to damage across the board. The reason for this was that even without their damage, they still have an abundance of cooldowns to rotate through in a burst filled meta, making them even while lacking in other departments very strong. However, with the patch, it's hard to justify Disc being positioned higher than either Mistweavers, who now excel in both damage output and healing, or Restoration Shamans, who have equally as strong defensive cooldowns and more throughput, just with the addition of all that added disruption. As such, we'll be moving Discipline down from S tier to A for now. The healer tier list is looking very different for the patch, as we have an entirely new S tier made up of Restoration and Mistweaver. In terms of balance though, outside of these two specs, it's looking very good. Both Holy Paladin and Holy Priest are moving up from B tier to A tier. Holy Priest, after its buffs to throughput, is doing considerably better. Holy Paladin also feels somewhat stronger now, thanks to slightly more healing output, buffs to survivability, and in general, good answers to high burst damage. That being said though, still find it hard to heal against specs like Beast Mastery Hunter and just seem like a worse Fist Weaver. 
Preservation, however, sees the biggest drop this tier list, going from S tier to A tier. After seeing a big decline in both representation and performance, the reason for this is mainly Restoration Shamans taking the limelight, and in comparison, Evoker feels like it heavily lacks with what it brings outside of just healing output. And if you're interested in learning how to navigate Solo Shuffle for your class, we've got hundreds of arena commentaries available now at skillcap.com. Our website features gameplay breakdowns from pro players who take you through their lobbies and guide step by step through each matchup. When you combine this with our damage and healing courses, you have all the information you need to start climbing the ladder. This even comes equipped with a rating gain guarantee. If you don't gain at least 400 points while actively using our guides, we refund you, simple as that. So if you want to take the next steps on your solo shuffle journey, visit skillcap.com to get started. So there you have it guys, an update for the solo shuffle tier list on patch 10.0.7. As always, thank you for watching, good luck in your climb, and from everyone here at Skillcapped, we hope you have a great rest of your day.